waiting for the recordings to start. And good morning and welcome to this week's session. Please make sure that you complete the register or write your student number on the chat. Um, and if you are going to write your student number on the chat, I was told this morning that we need to also let you know that you are doing that willingly uh, because of the popia you are willing to share your personal information on the chat. So otherwise, I will suggest that you please complete the register. Are you not able to hear me? I'm not audible enough. Can you guys hear me? Can somebody unmute and talk? So, I can, can hear you, yes. Thank you. Um, uh, whoever cannot hear me now, then it means please check if your microphone or your audio is not muted on your site, on your laptop or computer, whichever one you are using. Um, <laughs> So welcome to your exam preparation session. Um, today we're going to be looking at concepts relating to differentiation. And we'll do a lot of other activities relating to that from the four past exam papers that we have. So to kick off, um, you need to be able to know how to differentiate because you need to know the basic rules of differentiation which are straightforward when you differentiate you're going to multiply with what is in the power and subtract one from any value that is in the power that is the differentiation if you have a constant for example, a constant is like a number, one, two, three, four, hundred thousand, two thousand, five thousand. It's a constant. When you have only just a constant, a function with just a constant, y is equals to two, y is equals to hundred. That is just a function with a constant. Differentiating a constant is equals to zero. So the differentiation of a constant will just be zero. But if you have a constant times a variable, which then creates a function uh, with a variable, differentiation works differently then, because you're going to multiply with what is in the power of the function or the x or the variable. You will multiply that, whatever is in the power, with the constant and you will have to go back and subtract one from the power. And that is the rule of differentiation. And if you're differentiating the sum of two function, x, 2x plus 3y squared, those are two different functions. You differentiate them and add the, um, the differentiated functions. Now, when you work with differentiation as well, you must always go back to the powers, the rules of the power. Remember, any number without a power is to the power of one. So therefore, it means when you are doing differentiation and of a function where it says um, f of x is equals to x, you must know that that x is x to the power of one. Also, with the powers, when you do differentiation, you need to always remember that any value to the power of zero is equals to one. So when you do a differentiation and you have x to the power of one and you subtract one from the power, which then the answer becomes x to the power of zero, you need to know that that function will just be, the differentiated function will be equals to one because x to the power of zero is equals to one. 
The other thing that you need to always remember is in terms of the powers is the fraction. Remember the root and the fraction. A root can be converted to a power of a fraction and a, uh, a negative power as well can be converted to a fractional power, a, a, a fraction. So what I'm referring to, let's let me do this quick, quick, because at some point, some way, when we do the activities, you will experience the same thing. What I'm referring to, if I have x to the power of negative one, you need to know that this, you can write it as one over x is the same thing in terms of the differentiation, if they give you a function that looks like this, you need to know that you can convert it into the power of a negative thing. The same, similar, if I have x to the power of negative 2, this is the same, the negative, only the negative can be converted to 1 over, and the rest stays as x to the power of 2. So the negative becomes one over and that is x to the power of one and we know that when when a value to the power of one is the same as that value so those are the things that you need to be aware of similar to the root because a root is to the power of a fraction and you can move from a fraction to a root. Those things you will need to always constantly be aware of as you do differentiation. Okay, so those are the differentiations. Let's look at questions that we can do so that we can apply all these things that we reminded ourselves of. On the other thing about differentiation as well that you need to remember is, when we are differentiating, we are calculating the slope of a function. So, meaning we calculating the change in the values from the original values that they were to a different value. So you can calculate what we call the profit margin or the revenue margin or and so on. Okay, so the other thing you also need to remember is to maximize profit, your differentiated profit margin function will be equals to zero, and that will calculate whatever the value you are trying to maximize. So let's look at this question, right? Vuyo owns a Buravors roll stand. His profit Selling Buravors is given by a quadratic function of y is equal to minus 40 squared x squared plus 90x minus 5,333.5, where x represents the price of a Buravors roll in rent. Vuyo wants to maximize the profit. To maximize the profit, we need to make the differentiated profit equals to x. What should be the price per variables be in order for V to maximize his profit? So therefore it means we need to differentiate our y function. And to differentiate, remember, we're going to look at all these values. x is x to the power of 1, and this is a constant. So let's differentiate. We multiply with what is in the power. So we have minus 40 times 2 because 2 is in the power. And we're going to subtract 1 from the power. That's the rule of differentiation. And because this is a sum, we're also going to treat the next one as a different function. So to differentiate this, that will be 980 times 1. You don't have to do times 1, but I'm just going to demonstrate that. x to the power of 1 minus 1, because I know that x is the same as to the power of 1, and I need to subtract 1 from the power. Minus 
differentiating a constant. This is a constant because there is no x next to it or a variable next to it. Therefore, it means it will be zero. Minus 40 times 2 is 80. It's minus 80. X to the power 2 minus 1 is to the power of 1. Plus 980 times 1 is 980. X to the power of 0. I don't have to include a 0 again. This is the same as minus 80x plus x to the power of 1 is 1, or x to the power of 0 is 1. So 980 times 1 is 908. And this is my differentiated function. But that is not what we want. We know that if we need to maximize profit, the differentiated function of a profit should be equals to zero. So therefore, it means my differentiated function, I should make it equals to zero minus 80x plus 980. I'm sorry for the flicking of the thing. I don't know why and how to stop that. So we need to solve for x. So let's move minus 80 to the other side. It becomes 80x is equals to 980. And because this is a function, we can divide by 80. Whatever I do on the left, I must also do on the right. Therefore, x is equals to 980 divide by 8 is equals to 12. Five. And that's how differentiation works. <clears throat> All you need to always remember is if they don't ask you just to just differentiate and they ask you to maximize profit, when the question says maximize profit, always know that to maximize profit, you need to first differentiate and then make your differentiated question uh, or function equals to zero and then solve for whatever the value that you need to be solving for. Are there any questions before we move to the next one? Let me stop right here actually and ask. No questions? Okay, if there are no questions, then we can move to the next question on differentiation. So question 20 and 21 are also differentiation questions. So we need to answer question 20 and 21 based on the following information. FM sell its product for 200 rand per unit. The cost per unit is 80 rand plus X, where X represents the number of units sold. Per month. So question 20, it says, define the marginal profit function. So yeah, we need to define just the marginal profit function. So the, we need to know some of the functions. So some of the, the formulas. So in a way, in general terms, profit, it's revenue minus cost, right? That's what we know. So what will be our revenue? And what is our cost in this instance? So our cost, we are told that it's 80x. So if our cost is 80x, it's minus times 80x. I can just assume that. And our revenue, we are told that it is 200 per unit. So our revenue will be 200x. So we need to solve, sort out. 
our profit. Two hundred X minus eighty minus X and two hundred and minus X is one ninety nine X minus eight. And that is our profit function. And we can also just put the profit is perfect function of X because we are working with X as a unit and therefore your revenue will be revenue of X minus the cost of X like that. So therefore it means our formula here can also be changed to the profit function will be 199X minus 8, which it is option 4. Let me know if you are lost or I'm talking Greek so that I can explain it to you. <clears throat> um, can you please explain it again? I'm a bit lost. Okay, so going back to the statement, FM sells a product for 200 rand per unit, right? Can also even delete this so that we can start from the beginning. So that's what they told us. They sell. So that is a sale. Sale equals to your revenue. So 200 rent per unit. The cost per unit per month is given by 80 plus X, which then they gave us our cost of selling this um, product where X represent the number of units sold per month. So you need to always remember that if you need to calculate profit, profit, it's given by your revenue or sales minus the cost. Revenue minus cost. Right. The question in 20 says determine your profit function, marginal profit function, which is the same as profit function, because at the moment we haven't calculated the marginal profit function as yet, because the marginal profit function is a differentiated function. So. Um, the. Sale, we know that it is 200 per unit, so it means it's 200 times X amount will give us a revenue. So if I have to sell 10, this is how much revenue I would have brought, two, 10 times 200. Would have, I would have bought the revenue of 2,000, but because I don't know how, much, how many products I would have sold, but I know that I will be selling them 200 of the X amount of the units that I don't have. I don't know. Um, this will be my revenue. The cost, they told you what the cost is. Because remember the cost per unit is the, the cost is um, a, um, uh, and yeah, because they say also cost per unit. Or maybe because I, I should have thought about it this way. I didn't think about it in that way. Uh, because yeah, oh yeah, I think your question brings a good thing into mind uh, because the question here is profit margin. Uh, let's solve, sort out that part first. So this is the cost per unit. I only took it as the cost per unit as that, but it needs to be minus the cost per unit will be your 80 plus X, which is the cost per unit times how many X amount of units that you will be selling. So it's 80 plus X of the cost of those units that you are selling because we don't know at how many plus how many. So. Um, I think I the first time I did this, I did it all wrong. 
I got too excited to see the answer on there. Minus X times becomes minus 80 X and minus times minus is minus, which is plus X squared. Plus X squared. Now, the answer here will be 200 minus 80, which is, you can see that it's totally different to what I had previously, right? Plus X, X squared. That is the profit function. And now, to answer the question that they are asking us, which is, marginal profit, right? That's what they are asking. We need to calculate the marginal profit. So to calculate the marginal profit, we need to differentiate because marginal profit is your differentiated profit. Marginal profit is your differentiated profit function. So to calculate the marginal profit, we apply the same rule. We differentiate this, multiply by what is at the power, which is 120 times one, X one minus one, plus multiply with its, with what is in the power, it's two times X, two minus one. Therefore, our marginal profit will be 120 X to the power of zero, plus two X to the power of one, which is the same as 120, plus 2x, which is number one. I apologize. I totally apologize for misleading you the first time because I didn't take that into consideration. Okay, so this is how you will find the marginal profit because marginal profits are your differentiated profit function. Okay, so question 20 is option one. 21, it says, what is the marginal profit if the production line is 20 units? So they're asking us, what will be the marginal profit, the differentiated profit, if we sell 20 units? If we sell additional 20 units, therefore 120 plus 2 times 20 because we need to substitute the 20 into the X value, and that will give you 120 plus 40, which is 160. My calculating right. is 40, 40 plus 120 is 160. Yes, calculated, right? Oh, um, yeah. You guys, is it a long Saturday or what? Using the wrong, I selected the right formula, but I'm using the wrong formula. The wrong sign should be minus all over. Not a plus. I wish I can restart the session so that it makes sense because then starting on the wrong footing is not a good thing at all. Because the answer is 120 minus 2x. So it's 140, 120 minus 40, which is equals to 8, which is option B. Oh, gosh. We leave this. 
Okay, but that's how you will do differentiation. Hmm? Let's find more questions. Hopefully this one's we will be able to do them correctly one time. Let's see if we can find, yeah. A company total profits from producing and selling X unit of its product is given by the profit function of minus 0, 0,02 X to the power of two plus 300 X minus 200,000. How many units of this product must the company produce in order to maximize profit. So this is for you to do. To maximize profit, we need to first differentiate the profit function. So you first need to differentiate this profit function. And once you have differentiated the profit function, therefore you need to make sure that the profit function is equal to two and calculate and find x. That is for you to do. Are you winning? Remember to differentiate, to multiply with what is in the power and subtract one from the power and also differentiating a constant is zero. Can we do it together? Anyone? Yes. Okay. Let's differentiate. Okay, we're going to multiply with what is in the power. So minus 0 0.02 times 2 times x to the power 2 minus 1 plus 300 times 1 x1 one minus 1 because x to the power of 1 is missing the is the same as x and minus 0 because 200,000 is a constant so it will be equals to 1 and this will be minus 0, 0,04. I don't know why this thing is flicking up and up and up. X to the power of one. I don't have to write it. Plus 300 times X to the power of zero. X to the power of zero is one is the same as to 300 and now I know that because they talk about maximizing profit so I need to make the differentiated profit function equals to zero 
So therefore, I'll have zero is equal to minus 0 0.04x plus 300, which is equals to taking minus to the other side, it becomes 0 0.04x is equals to 300. Divide both sides by 0 0.04, 0 0.04, 0 0.4, 0 0.4 cancels out. Therefore, your x will be equal to 300 divided by 0 0.04. It equals to 7,500. Happy? Yes. Okay, so let's look at another question. Question 90 and 20 are based on this same information. Here yeah, they have given you the average fun cost function <clears throat> for the product are given by this, where X represent the number of units sold. How many products units were sold? Oh, sorry, how many? Production units will result in a minimum average cost per unit. So, they want to, to tell them how many, oh, how many, how many um, production units will result in a minimum average cost per unit. So we can, um, Differentiate the product, uh, the not really, can we? Yes, we can differentiate the uh, the cost uh, function, and then make the differentiated function equals to zero, and then calculate what will be the average cost. Now you have one over four x plus four plus hundred over x. So one over x is the same as x to the power of negative one. That's given. Two over x. Let's assume that I have that. <clears throat> this is the same as two times one over X, because if I multiply two with one, because two is the same as two over one, multiply what is at the numerator with numerator, so it will be two times one is two, one times X is X. So therefore it means I can also rewrite this 100 over x this way, and I can also rewrite 2 times x, uh, 2 times 1 over x is the same as 2x to the power of negative 1, because if 1 over x is the same as x to the power of negative 1, why not? So let's do the same with 100. So 100 over x will be 100 times 1 over x, which is the same as 100 x to the power of negative 1, right? So we can rewrite this whole cost function as 1 over 4x 
plus four plus hundred x to the power of negative one. Have to delete the ink. Mm -hmm. So this we can write it as one over four x plus four plus hundred x to the power of negative one. Now let's differentiate this. Differentiating this function will be x is the same as x to the power of one, so therefore it will be one over four times one, x to the power one minus one plus zero because four is a constant. I'm not going to put, oh, I can put the plus 100 times minus 1. Mm -hmm. X to the power minus 1 minus mm -hmm. minus 1, because I need to subtract 1 from the power. I don't know why my screen keeps on flicking, um, and I've tried to minimize, maximize. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's differentiate. That will be 1 over 4. X to the power of 0 will just be 1. And minus 1 times 100 and 0, we can just ignore that. Minus 1 times 100 is minus 100. And X to the power of minus... <laughs> Two minus two to the power of minus two. <clears throat> and x to the power of minus two. This whole thing we can rewrite it as we can re change this minus. Hundred. We let's start it slowly. So, which is the same as one over four minus hundred over x squared. If we need to maximize or minimize, we make this equals to zero, and. If we do that, then we can take x over, um, what do you call this now? Minus 100 over x to the other side, it becomes positive. It will be 100 over x squared. You must remember that this, we solve them as the same way as functions, right? So equals to 1 over 4, and we treat this as a function. We need to only have x over 2 on this side. So it is a, it is multiplying, or it is dividing. So it means we need to multiply by x over 2 on the other side, and we also need to multiply by x over 2 on the other side. So this side, x over 2 will cancel out. You will be left with 100. In this side, you will have 1 over 4x squared. I know that it's something that keeps on changing around a lot, but to get rid of 1 over 4, we multiply. We do the, we multiply by the inverse of the function, right? So it means we multiply this side by 4 over 1, therefore it cancels out, and also this side we multiply by 4, 4 over 1, multiply by 4 over 1, then this will cancel out. Then you are left with 400 is equals to x squared. And to get rid of the 2, 
we can take the square root on both sides. And two and the square root will cancel out. And what is the square root of 400? It's equals to 20. X is equals to 20. So that will be 20 units. The long calculation, right? Are we good? Yes. Now, based on that information, now you need to answer the following questions below. It says, choose the statement that gives a practical interpretation of. If we find the cost unit to be 14.25. The average cost you need to be 14.25. What is our interpretation? So now you must also think of it in this way at this point. Because this is the average cost unit, not the marginal cost unit. So therefore, it means you cannot use the marginal cost unit for it. That's one. So you will have to interpret it directly based on the average cost unit. So which one will that be? Is it number two, number three, number four? Is it number two? It will be number two because it is um, a cost unit interpretation and it is the average cost unit interpretation. So this is not the total cost or it's not the fixed cost. It is the average cost. So the average cost unit of producing 25 units, because if you come to this function and put there 25, if you calculate this and you get 1425, you just need to make sure that you interpret it based on that. So the average cost unit of producing 25 units will be 14 rand 25 cent. That is the average cost, which is option number one. Okay. If they would have given you a marginal cost unit like that, then you will do it that way as well. Okay, so let's go to the next question paper. See if there are more questions as well. The other thing is because they don't tell you that differentiate, you need to be able to know how to identify the question in order for you to know that this is the question to differentiate. But on this one, they did give you a statement to say differentiate this function, which makes it easy because now you know that you need to apply differentiation. So differentiate that statement when I go get water. <clears throat> That is your exercise. I'm going to give you some few minutes. Do it on your own, and I will be with you now.
tun. We have the answer. Hmm? Not yet. Oh, because it's got fractions. Okay. Let me know if you need help. Um, I can I please have help with the fraction part of the sum? I'm still not hundred percent sure on that. Okay. Let's do it together. Okay. Let's differentiate. It will be six times three mm -hmm. X three minus one, right? Minus twelve times minus two X to the power minus two minus one plus four times. 3 over 2 x 3 over 2 minus 1 minus 0. And that's how straightforward. 6 times 3 is 18. x to the power of 2, 3 minus 1 is 2, minus times minus is positive, 24, because 12 times 2 is 24, x to the power of minus 3, let's calculate the fraction, so you can simplify, 2 can go into 4, it goes into 4, how many times, 2 times, right? So you can say 2 goes 1 time and it goes 2 times, 2 times 3, it's plus 6, x, and then you are left with the fraction at the top to calculate. So the fraction at the top is a subtraction, so we need to find the common denominator. 
So it's 3 over 2 minus 1. So the common denominator is 2. You say 2 goes how many times into 2? It goes 1 time. 1 times 3 is 3. 1 goes how many times into 2? It goes 2 times. 2 times 1 is minus 2. Then the answer here will be minus 3. Minus, sorry, 3 minus 2 is 1 over 2. So therefore, x to the power 1 over 2 will be the answer. Um, Elizabeth, do you not then have to differentiate it further? No, you only do it one time. One time oh, okay. only. And then that's it. So now we, you can rearrange to look at which one. So let's see. Uh, because you can see that uh, this one has 36. This one has a 4. And this one has a 6. So let's see. 18, 6, and 24. But the powers are different. And this one has 18 to the power of 2. Plus 6 to the power of a half plus 24 to the power of a negative 3, and then that's it. You only do the differentiation once, one time, okay. once off. Mm -hmm. You don't go and uh, differentiate again after you get this answers. One time only. So the answer okay. is option one. <clears throat> See if there is another question we might even finish earlier than two o'clock because we are left with one question and then we can just do question and answer for any other question that you might have so <clears throat> um the total cost of a manufacturer X watch is given by a function, and this is the cost function, the total cost function of a thousand plus hundred X minus X squared over four. Sorry, the marginal cost um, to the manufacturer of the thirty first, the thirty fifth watch is. So they need you to calculate the marginal cost of the 35th watch, not the not maximize profit, right? So you just need to make sure that you differentiate this because remember marginal means differentiated function. <clears throat> so we need to differentiate the cost function. And you also need to remember that x squared over 4 is the same as 1 over 4 times x squared, right? In a way. They are one and the same thing. So differentiate this cost function.
how we finish. So this function you can just rewrite it as a thousand plus hundred x minus one over four squared. Are you winning? Are we win? Do you need help? Do you just end up with minus a quarter x to the power of two plus a hundred? Nope. You know, you don't just end up with a minus a quarter because remember next to x there is marked to the power of x is to the power of two, right? What did yeah, you do with that two? It needs to multiply the quarter, right? Mm -hmm. Must multiply with what is in the power and subtract one oh, from right. yes. Minus Don't forget that. Very important. So you get minus a half x. Yes. But remember and then the question is asking you. Do you then substitute the 31 with the x? Yes. 
looking back. Okay, are we winning? Are we there yet? Okay, so let's see. <clears throat> so, let's differentiate. Differentiating a constant that will be zero plus a is to the power of 1, so that it means it's 100 times 1, which is 100. x to the power 1 minus 1, minus 1 over 4 times 2, x to the power of 2 minus 1. <coughs> x to the power of 0 is 1, so our answer will be 100 times one is 100. Two goes one time into two and it goes two times into four. So therefore, yeah, we'll have minus a half. X to the power of two minus one will be equals to X to the power of one, which is X. In order to find the marginal profit after producing the first watch, we will get 100 minus half times 31, which then it is equals to 84.5, which you can say it's equals to 84 point. Happy? Are we good? Yes. Are we good or good or good yes. yes. Okay. Let's look at the last exam paper and then we can find more. I will I, I do have more other activities or exercises that we can do. If some of the questions in this are included in that exercise that I have selected, then it's still fine. We can skip them. So looking for differentiation functions. Okay. See massive like on this one. There are no differentiation questions. Okay, we do. Okay, so this one, I do have it on there. Um, we'll just exclude it from the activity that we'll do. <clears throat> so, Musara Sarani store sells bottled water at a special price. The bottled water costs the store three rent, each with a fixed cost of 280 per week for marketing. The weekly cost is linear function of a unit price X given by this. So this is our cost function. Uh, <clears throat> because they gave us our cost function. So here they didn't just say this is just the cost of X per unit. So we know that this is our cost function. The revenue function as well is given by from selling the water bottles is given by the quadratic function, which is that revenue function. And they say if your profit function is given by your profit is equal to your revenue minus cost, then find the marginal profit function. So what, <clears throat> uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this and because I'm tired of the the um, 
PDF flipping around as often as possible. Let me just copy this and paste it onto a PowerPoint slide. And then we will answer this from, from there. And then I can just share the PowerPoint slide because I know that there it's not going to flick around. It will be instant. Select a new slide. And There. And I'm going to check if there are more questions on this. Um, yes, we do. I'm also going to copy this. Sure. And I'm going to also paste it on there. It's not nice to look at the thing flicking all the time. Yeah. We can stop her sharing. Yeah, the PowerPoint slide is state of the PDF document. And we can do the activities from there. Come on, work with me. Oh. Let's see if we can do it this way. Okay. Are you able to see the slides? Okay, so this is the same question that we will keep on. Now it's easy. Yeah. All right, in here, and it, there is no disturbance. Okay, so now the first thing we need to do is create the profit function based on the information given. So we need to substitute these equations into this function so that we can then uh, calculate our marginal profit. So the first is to substitute your revenue um, function, which is minus 20x squared plus 500x. Maybe I didn't have to write this line here. Minus, and I'm going to put this in a bracket because it is the entire function, and we know that the equation has a negative, so 280 minus 3x. Simplify the equation. How do we simplify? Uh, this will be minus 20x squared plus 500x minus times 280. It's minus 280. Minus times minus positive dx and like times together, right? So let's do that. Minus 20x squared, 500x and 3x. We add them together, it will be plus 503x minus. 208. Now we do have now our profit function, but what we want is the marginal profit function, which is our differentiated function. So I'm going to give you a few minutes to do your differentiated profit function based on our last function. So this is our profit function. Differentiate that. And let me know if you need help. Okay. 
should be quick. Are you done? <clears throat> yes, is the answer. What is the, your differentiated profit, mar, uh, marginal it's profit? Minus 40x plus so 503. Be, yeah, so it will be two times minus 20, which is minus 40. X two minus one will be one. So it's the same as X and differentiating 503 X is the same as plus 503. Differentiating minus 280 is equals to zero. So we don't have to write anything. So that is your marginal profit. And the answer is option two. There we go. Let's move to the next question. Find the derivative. Finding a derivative is the same as they are saying differentiate. All right. So we just need to differentiate this. Remember you have 3 over x is the same as 3 times 1 over x, which is the same as 3 times x to the power of negative 1. So we can rewrite this function. Our f of x, oh sorry, not our f of x, our function is equals to, because we just rewriting the whole thing, 3x plus 5x cubed minus 3x to the power of negative 1. Differentiate. Now you can apply the derivative. So it can be quick. Let me know if you need help and let me know if you are done. Um, I'm done. Yeah. Is the op is it option number one minus three plus fifteen x to the power of two plus three x to the power of two? I don't know because I haven't worked it out. So okay. let's see. Let's work it out. So differentiating two will be equals to zero. Differentiating minus 3x, it's minus okay. 3, because x1 one minus 1 is 0, which is multiplied by 1, plus 5 times 3. 15. 15x to the power 3 minus 1. Two. Two. two minus one times minus three plus three plus three x to the power minus one minus one minus two minus two so therefore the answer will be minus three plus 15 x squared plus 
three X minus two. Which one is this? Number two. No, number three. No, cannot be number three because number three is oh, minus. Sorry, it's number four. It's number, it's four. number one. No, it's not number one. <laughs> number four. It is number four, yes. Mm -hmm. Minus three plus 15 squared plus three X minus two. Yes, number four is the correct one. <clears throat> okay, other questions? The function of the total profit in thousands of rents to sell X item is given by this profit function. What is the marginal profit? Differentiate this function. That's your question. All you just need to do is find the differentiated function. And then once you have the answer, you can rearrange the date, the, the information. Okay, it was easy, right? All right. Yeah. Differentiating a constant is zero. Yes. Differentiating the next one so that I can remind those who have who forget because I think because we've been taking shortcuts. Let's do it step by step this time. We multiply a hundred by one and subtract one from the power minus. 5 times 2 x 2 minus 1. Therefore, this will be 100 times 1 is 100 x to the power of 0 minus 5 times 2 is minus 10 x to the power of 1, which is the same as 100 times 1, which is 100 minus 10 x. We can rearrange this minus 10 X plus 100 is our function, which is option number. Two. Moving on to more complex differentiation function and you look at this and you'll be like scratching your head. Oh no, where do I start? Where do I even begin? <sighs> Easy, right? You know the powers, you know the roots, everything you know about the basic things. Apply this. Let's rewrite the whole, but we will rewrite it in different steps so that it can, we can know what we do. So let's start with this part first. I'm going to use the bottom and I'm going to scratch it out. Oh, let's not scratch it out. I'll use the top part here. So we have two times the quadro root of g to the power of 3. Now, the first thing we need to do is get rid of this quadro, the, the, the root side, right? Let's do the root first. So we know. What do we know about the root? Because in front there is a two, we say it is to the power of a half. We can do the same. The, with the four, it will be the same as to the power of one over four, right? So let's do that. We change this to two times g to the power of three to the power of 
1 over 4. So now we have, now we have fractions. 1 over 4 times, now we have 1 over 4 times 3 over 1 because that's what the power is. Because the rule of the power says if it's any power or oh, any value to the power, multiply by the power, we can just multiply the powers. So we're going to multiply the powers. 3 times 1 is 3. 1 times 4 is 4. So this we can rewrite it as 2g to the power of 3 over 4. So let's uh, write it back onto our table here. We can rewrite it here. Now I've got another problem with the ink. Is two times g to the power of three over four. Now let's solve the next part, which is this one. So also say it is one over, ignore the minus because the minus is there. So one over four G to the power of three, right? We can split this into multiple parts. So, because it's, uh, we can split one four g as one over four times one over g three, right? Because one times one is one. Four times g three is four g to the power of three, right? So we can split it in that way. So once we have split it in this manner, then the next logical thing is to convert because numbers are fine. So we don't have to worry about the number. So we can come back and write the number here and only have G, uh, one over G to worry about. So we already sorted that one part. So we have one over G to the power of three to sort out. We know that this, we can rewrite it because we know that one over X, we can write it as X to the power of negative value. So that's what we know. And we also know that x to the power of negative 2, ugh, come on, x to the power of negative 2, we can write it as 1 over x to the power of 2, which is similar to what I have there, right? So we can move from 1 over g3 to this, it can be written as g to the power of negative 3. The same thing, right? This and that we rewrote it the same way. So the next part is g to the power of negative three plus ten to the power of four. Don't be fooled by ten to the power of four is still a constant. So now let's differentiate because I've rewritten the whole equation in a way that it enable enables us to do differentiation. So let's differentiate. Not, not G, but F. We need to differentiate F of G, which is easy. Multiply with what is in the power. So two times three over four. Now I've got another issue with my ink. Oh gosh. G to the power three over four minus one minus one over four times minus three g to the power minus three minus one plus zero because this is constant is equals to zero. Two goes two times into four, so therefore I have three over two as the answer. And we need to solve the fraction. So three over four minus one. My common denominator is four. Four goes one time. One times three is three. One goes four times four times. It's minus four. 
Therefore, the answer here will be minus one, one over one over four. So my G will be minus one over four. As you can see already, they should be jumping up and down because we have an answer somewhere there. But you can see that clearly we're not going to get that answer. It's not right. Okay, so <clears throat> moving on. Minus times minus is positive. And three times one is three over four. And G minus three minus one is minus four. Now, don't get too excited because if you look at this, we know we clearly can see that this is not the right answer. So three is not, is not going to be our answer. So it means we need to take back everything we just did back to the root in order for us to get the answer correctly here. Okay, so if we need to take it back, we also need to do it step by step. So let's let's do it step by step. Let's start with g to the power of negative g to the power of negative one over four. You remember what that is? Four. Right? It is yes. a, it's the same thing. So we can just do that. Three over two times the quadral root of G. That sorts one thing out, right? It sorts one thing out. Then we can be too excited about that, okay? And also, if I look at all the answers, it doesn't seem like it will be the right, the, the, the final answer, but we'll get back to it just now. And what is g to the power of negative 4? We can write it as 1 over g to the power of 4, right? Mm -hmm. So plus 3 over 4, g, uh, 1 over g to the power of 5. Now, because all of these things are multiplying, you can see, right? They are multiplying to one another. So like, uh, uh, the other thing I've, I made, uh, this is wrong, uh, because this is wrong. Uh, I'm going to tell you why it's wrong right now. We have the quadral root of g, which is g to the power of 1 over 4. But this is minus, so it cannot be that what we had. So we need to say, uh, uh, because it's g minus 1 over 4, regardless of whether it's 1 over 4, we need to say 1 over g of 1 over 4 and only convert the g over this one at the bottom to 1 over the quadral root of g. So the answer should be like that. So this is multiplied by 1 over g to the cube root or quadral root, something like that. Now we can simplify it further as well. So three times one, it's three over two times two times four G plus three times one is three over four times three G to the power four. Which one is the correct answer? Let's see, it's option number one. 3, 2, 4, square, 3, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4
and they give you questions like this. Okay, so this looks ex almost similar to the previous one that we did. Oh, do you wanna, uh, maybe I need to wait here so that you can take a screenshot or take a picture or something. Uh, and you can always come back to the recording yeah, to look at all this. Okay, so exercise three, a certain, a certain production facility, the cost function is 2x plus 5, and the revenue function is 8x plus x squared, and they want you to find the profit function. So you just need to remember that the profit function is given by your revenue function minus your cost function. So just substitute the values and remember there is a negative sign. So it means the cost function, you will put it into brackets to accommodate that negative. And simplify and see if you get the profit function. And if you are done, let me know. If we spend the time, we yes, ah. still have 20 minutes. 20 minutes. be quick and easy and you can also rearrange the the values <laughs> Let me know when you're done. Oh, you guys are posting on the on the chat. Sorry, I've been I've not been looking at the chat. Um, <clears throat> are we done? Do we have an answer? Okay. No question. No response. Yeah. X minus X squared minus into bracket. X, X plus, 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 pl
8 minus 2, your 8x minus 2x. And then minus you write 5. Five. Five. It's plus 5. It's plus 5. No, but yeah, you no, need to multiply by the negative. By the negative. Um, jo, um, jo, um, Joan, your... Um, your You are echoing us. Oh, I'm not sure why. It's as if you have another listening device somewhere close by. Okay, so it is like times together. Why? Why do I have two x? It should be just x, not minus two x. It just it's eight x minus x squared minus two x times minus, then that minus times positive will be minus five. And like times together, so minus x squared, eight x minus two x is positive six x minus five. The answer is option four. So the next question, what will be the amount that must be produced to maximize profit? Remember, maximizing profit, it means you need to find the marginal profit and make marginal profit equals to zero. And therefore find your X value. So it means take your profit function and differentiate it. So differentiate your profit function. You can do that together. So to differentiate this, we multiply with what is in the power minus two x two subtract one plus six x one minus one minus zero, which then it is equals to our marginal profit will be minus two X plus six. And because they say maximizing profit, therefore we make the marginal profit equals to zero and solve for X. Take two to the other side, two x to the other side, it becomes two x is equals to six. Divide this side by two, and therefore we divide on the other side by two, and that will be equals to three. And remember, it is to the thousand. Multiply that by thousand, and the answer will be three thousand units, amount of units. The answer will be option four. Okay. Are there any questions, anything that you want me to verify or you still unsure of? The next last couple of questions should be able to help you clarify some of these things because then there is nothing more I can offer you except give you answers which is not even going to be helpful at all so calculate the marginal profit cost or marginal cost function it means differentiate this cost function and you can when you are done you can tell me which option is it one, two, and three? And I'll, I can show you how to answer the question as well.
Huh? Okay, maybe there is. No, no, this is the last. Uh, maybe option four. Option one. Maybe option one. <laughs> I like the, the fact that you said maybe. It's like as if you're not sure of your answers, guys. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Remember, it's always about... It's about multiplying with what you have. So 1 over 10 times 2. Remember, 2 is 2 over 1. Let's put it this way. Maybe if I explain things in this manner, some people might understand them better. Uh, times x to the power 2 minus 1 plus 5 times 1 x to the power 1 minus 1 and a thousand it's always zero regardless of how big the number is it will be zero so two times two times one or we can say two goes one time into two and it goes five times into ten and therefore, 1 times 1 is 1. 5 times 1 is 5. x to the power 2 times 1, or 2 minus 1, is 1. Minus 2 plus 5 times 1 is 5. 5 times 1 is 5. And the answer is option 1. Then the next one, based on the same information, if we have 1,000 additional um, units to produce, interpret all this. Like I'm saying it, you can hear in my explanation. 1,000 additional, not 1,000, then it's equals. It's 1,000 additional more, adding more, adding additional more items will reduce or increase so let's find out so if we add c of a thousand into this function five times a thousand one over five times a thousand plus five what do we get Plus five is two hundred and five. So one additional unit will be equal to that. So if we add a thousand additional units, one additional unit, uh, or if we add one additional thousand kilogram unit of whatever the thing we are producing uh, of steel it will yield the cost of 205. That's that's how you interpret this. So you can you cannot say it directly. So only directly is when you are using cost function, not the marginal cost. So when you're using your cost function, uh, you can say things directly to say, if I substitute the 1,000 in the cost function, I can say, when um, co the cost of producing a thousand kilogram will give 205 but because i'm not interpreting the cost function i'm interpreting the marginal cost function which is the slope and the slope we always say one additional unit either you are increasing or decreasing because it's the slope if it's positive it's increasing if it's negative it's decreasing so one additional unit of producing a thousand um, a thousand more kilograms will yield or will produce 205 so this will be how you will interpret it always remember that to always use the, the weight like this it will increase by it will yield it will produce one additional unit it's the slope 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 know how to interpret the slope of the equation okay 
if given the marginal profit, so in this one they have calculated the marginal profit, therefore it means they're giving you the differentiated function. If the marginal profit in thousand of rents to produce a toy motorcycle is given by this, where X is the number of toy motorcycle produced, find the marginal profit for, for producing 20 additional units and interpret. So it means at the end, we need to go and interpret the answer. So let's see how do we interpret and how do we calculate that? So it's easy because we told we need to calculate for 20 more units. So minus 20 divided by five, because we just substitute where we see X, we put 20. So the answer would be Thirty minus four is twenty-six. How do we interpret? When twenty motorcycles are produced, there will be an increase because my uh, uh, it will increase in production will yield an increase of twenty-six. <gasps> it shouldn't be an increase. It should be a decrease actually because of the negative. But anyway. It will yield an increase of 26 rand per profit. But our slope function here is negative. I don't know why it would have been an increase. Anyway, your last question. <coughs> Differentiate this function minus 7 plus 5x minus 5 over 2x squared minus 3 x to the power four. And this should take us to the end of the session. So let me know which option you think, since it's our vocabulary. It may might be one or two or three or four. I have the answer, Elizabeth.
let's see, what do we think it is? No response. Are you still busy? I think the answer is number three. Okay. Let's see if it's number three. Differentiating a constant is zero. Five times one is five. X one minus one is zero. Two times five minus ten times. It's ten times ten over two x2 minus 1 is 1. 3 times 4 is minus 12. x4 minus 1 is 3. Let's rewrite it properly. This will be 5 minus 5 because it's 5 times into, <clears throat> into 10 to the power of one, so it's x minus 12 x cube. So it is option three, yay. Option three it is. And I had one last exercise. We probably, we can do that. You're not in a hurry, Moss. I'm also not in a hurry today. So we can I can show you the last exercise as well to do. Uh, but it almost look no, this is the same exercise we did. Sorry. It is that exercise, this exercise. Yes, it's one and the same thing. So I'm not going to repeat it. So anyway, that, that concludes today's session because there are no more other exercises I have for you. Um, are there any questions? I see that someone has posted there. Can I have access to the, the recordings? I'm going to show you now. I'm going to share with you as well in the link in the chat. Um, that is if I can find the link. <clears throat> okay, yes, I do have the link. I'm going to share the link in the chat. Please uh, go watch other recordings from there. And I'm going to also share, or not share, but share my screen. I'm, I'm just going to stop sharing on this one. So that I can share what I want to share with you just now to answer that question so that then even in the future it is on the recording so that nobody can unless if people don't watch the recordings. Okay, so <clears throat> please make sure that you also complete the register. I'm going to post the, the link as well in the chat just now. We need to complete the register. Okay. Well, the link to the register and continue it also. And I explain what I just am sharing with you just now. And the link to the register is in the chat as well. So please make sure that you complete that. Otherwise, you can put your student number on the chat and remember. Uh, if you put your student number there, you are consenting to publicly share your student number on the public platform, like on the chat. Okay, so what I'm sharing with you is where you can find the recordings, not only for today's session, but for any other, if you didn't know, UNISA Western Cape has on my UNISA or my module platform where we we save all the recordings for all the sessions that 
we we offer to students. So for tutorial classes, if you have any of the tutorial classes uh, or modules that offer tutorials, you can come here and look at their recordings. Uh, the Writing Center for English, mostly. Um, you can check if any of your modules are on here and go and watch the recordings. For Numeracy Center, where we are at, uh, <clears throat> the uh, I've been with UNISA students since the beginning of the year, but for second semester, we do have recordings. So I'm just going to show you. If you click on that link, it will take you to all the weekly recordings that we had for all the Monday sessions that we had up until the 19th of September. So all the recordings are, are here for the Akalit sessions or numeracy center sessions um, classes that we had. It takes time to reflect, but there are they. You will find all the recordings there. Um, the topics are generic, so it's not PMI specific, but uh, you will see that they might be helpful. If you need the notes linking to those recordings, they are always stored under this um, open class folder, there are notes in there. If you click on it, it will open another tab where you can go and find all the notes. There will be notes for first semester session classes that we offered, um, which some of them might also cover like topics like differentiation. I can't even remember now all of them, but the notes are in here. <clears throat> um, and then for today's session, I just want to go to today's session. There is an exam prep link also, which is the QMI examination preparation link here at the bottom. If you click on it, it should have all the recordings for the past two sessions that we have, including today's session. It will be loaded on here. Probably you can check next week. Okay. <clears throat> So they are this here are the recordings for the last two sessions that we had. Um, also, the uh, I think we, what do you call this thing now? The uh, past exam papers that we used in the session, I think I've uploaded them on here. So let's see. Yes, there they are. So the four past exam papers that we just shared now with you and went through the the questions, they are there to help you prepare for the exam. Uh, what else do I need to share with you? Nothing else. There is nothing more other than what I've just shared. But for example, uh, if you <clears throat> if you uh, need um, some of the recordings for the uh, semester one that we did, you want to go back and look at them, you can check my YouTube channel, I think. It's called, uh, it's my name, my full name. You can just Google me. I think maybe now I'm even famous on YouTube. I'm joking, I'm not. But you can go there. There are some of the recordings that we do. So uh, I did, uh, you can go and look at them. Uh, you can search for QMI and it should bring back, it's, it will be the same recordings that are uploaded on, on UNISA's platform. Uh, it's not something new, so. Um, yeah, you can search there. You will find more of the recordings. You, we we do have last year's recordings as well, where we did the exam preparations and all that. You can go through that as well. Um, but everything is on. It's it's available for everyone. So, or free of charge, of course, because all Unisa work that we do, we do it to support you guys. So use that. And you do have my email address. If maybe you don't have it, it's eboyem at unisa.ac.za. And if you need to have a consultation with me, we do have a consultation platform where you can also ask for a one-on-one -on -one consultation. But hey, my busy schedule sometimes doesn't allow me to. But yeah, so other than that, if you have any questions or comments, you can send me an email or copy ct and tap at unisa.ac.za and we will surely answer or respond to your questions. Um, um, yeah, that's it. There is nothing more I can offer you. I will see you next week when we do our last session in terms of exam preparation. We will be looking at financial math. 
So bring your financial calculators. Uh, if you haven't bought a financial calculator, now is that chance that you go and buy that financial calculator so that you allow yourself time to practice with it. Um, and I think the two hour session will allow us to do lots of activities and lots of exercises, but because there are so many uh, financial math questions. Um, yeah, if you have a financial calculator, it will save you a whole lot of time in the exam as well. Uh, when you answer those questions, so I will see you next week on our final final session of the year. Um, all the best to those who are writing their exam. This uh, have already started or they are starting this next week. All the best until next time, next uh, same place, same time. Thank you. Bye. Hi guys, it's Emma.